Hi everyone, this is part two of this series for creating and rigging a game character. I will be creating a female antagonist for a game. She will be a boss enemy character that the hero of this game will have to do battle with. It's a good idea to have a story that can be built on about the character you're creating. The story doesn't have to be anything elaborate, but the more details you have, the better. Being able to keep the story in mind will support the creation of a believable and well-established character. So in my case, my character is a powerful evil goddess who is alluring but devastating to those who challenge her as well as those who follow and worship her. I want her to be taller than most humans. I'll worry about this in the final stages, though, of her creation. Everything else, I'll keep an open mind about it and I will keep it loose for now and just let the exploration guide me. So in ZBrush, I'm using a base mesh with separated parts. You can make your own if you like, or you can get one of the base meshes I have created. I'll go ahead and put the link in the description if you're interested. You can also check out other base meshes out there. If it works for you, use it. It's just best to get one to follow along in this tutorial because the work we will do for getting the look for the character will be projected onto the base mesh later on. I'm using PureRef for storing references. We will be going through references updates throughout the series and as the character evolves. Currently, I am making a character that is South American. For now, I will focus only on her head. In ZBrush, I am moving the facial structures of the base mesh to align with my references. Not looking for anything perfect here, just favoring the look of the references. This is just for the first pass. With this pass, you want to think about the general position of the features of the face. I like to keep the brush tools limited for this pass. My go-to brushes in ZBrush are the Move Brush, Clay Build-Up Brush, Pinch, and High Polish Brush. The mesh will be low res for most of the sculpt. Uh, you should only really need, I would say, one or two levels of subdivision for this pass. This pass will be very loose, mainly to get the facial features placed where we want them to be. And then we're going to go right into MetaHuman Creator to expedite this process. For a good transfer to MetaHumans, we need to get the eyelids as clean as possible without wasting too much time on it. Now this process will allow us to leap forward to see a near final look. I like this because of the speed and ability to see how the model will most likely look early on. Also, as we go through this process, you will see that we can easily modify the appearance to get the final sculpt aligned with the vision of the character. Now we're ready for exporting to Unreal Engine. We'll need to duplicate the head, and if you have a separate set of eyes, duplicate those too. Then merge the duplicated message, message which is the uh, eyes and the head. We will export them and merge them together before we export, and we'll be in Unreal Engine, and we'll bring it in as an FBX. Once that is exported, we need to open Unreal Engine to a new project or a project you're already working from. I'm using Unreal Engine 5.5. This version has issues with the process and we need to update some things. 
Go ahead and import your FBX file of the head you sculpted. We need a material for this too. It should be default and this is going to be considered a static mesh. So So now we have our head in the project. In older versions, you could just right click inside of that same folder that you brought the mesh into and you would see a MetaHuman animator option close to the bottom of the menu. In 5.5, however, it's gone. So we need to place it here. So what needs to happen is we're going to have to install the older version of this MetaHuman plugin. If you see in the plugin area, there is a MetaHuman plugin there. However, we need the older version and I'll show you what that looks like on the Fab Marketplace. With the plugin now in initialized and installed into uh, Unreal Engine, go ahead and add it to your project by going to the plugin menu and selecting it. After that, go ahead and restart Unreal Engine. Now we can go into the content browser folder that we have containing our head. We can right click anywhere in that folder and go to the menu. In that menu down at the bottom, you should see it. It should say MetaHuman Animator. You click on that and a second menu pops up. You want to choose MetaHuman Identifier. This will create an identity in your folder. Name it whatever you want. Best idea here is to choose a name that's similar to the name of the final character that you have in mind here. Now double click on the identity. I'm getting an error because I have a lot going on on my computer right now. And you might get this uh, error as well. It should be fine. You should be able to ignore it. But it's always good to shut down any extra programs going on on your computer at the same time. Now a preview window will open. First thing we need to do is create a component from our mesh. In the upper menu, click on Create Components. From the drop down menu, click on the mesh and find the static mesh head that you imported and then click on that. Give it a little time here and your head mesh will appear. Now menu populates on the left hand side. We want to choose the body type first. Click on the bodies in the left column. Then go ahead and choose the body and the height. I move the slider all the way to the right for the height so my body is tall and I select a normal build. Now let's go through a few recommendations from the Unreal Engine documents. You want to click on Lit, and then we want to change the exposure to 1. This allows for better contrast to see the plane changes and forms of the head mesh. Turn the head so it faces you, and set up the lighting so that it is even all over the mesh. Easy to evaluate this by looking at the shadows around the cheeks and jaw. The hotkey for this to move the light around is holding L and dragging with the mouse. It can also be on some computers control L and dragging with the mouse. Now that you have the lighting set up, go back into the left menu and click on neutral pose under poses. To get the best visual for the head, we'll go to the camera icon, in a, which is above the mesh in the preview window and change the field of view to 20. Now align the head to the preview window so we can see the top of the head clearly in the chin. Now we can go to Promote Frame in the upper menu and click on it. Click Yes on the pop-up menu as well. In this pass, we will not be needing additional frames, so we'll just be using this one frame. Now click on Track Markers when the button activates. This will show markers that Unreal Engine will use to figure out major features of the face for conversion to a metahuman. Yours may be better or worse than the alignment that I currently have, but this is very easy to adjust. If your green tracker markers are aligned well enough, you can actually skip this step. But if it's like mine, you will need to manually place some markers. Zoom into the markers that you'll, you will be editing. There are lines and dots that you can see, both green. If you click and hold onto the line, a row of dots connected to, the, to that line will move. If you click and drag on the dot itself, only the dot moves. We just want to get the trackers close to the actual mesh. I like to move the line proportions first and then individually place the tracker dots. Remember, we just want the general shape of the features of this mesh. 
you will see that MetaHuman Creator, there will be a good amount of rapid editing going on that will define the final shape of this face and features for this pass. Once we have the trackers where we want, then go to the upper menu and click on MetaHuman Identity Solver and give it time to run. Now we have the MetaHuman base for our base mesh. You can click on the center icons above the head in the preview window to see how well it created a mesh to edit in MetaHuman Creator. When ready, click on the Mesh to MetaHuman button above the preview window, and from that drop-down menu, choose the second option to make a full MetaHuman. You will need your login for Unreal Engine account for this bridge to start. Now you can save this project and go to the bridge to go into MetaHuman Creator, or you can open up MetaHuman Creator in your browser. It's up to you. In MetaHuman Creator, make sure the versions match up. We're using 5.5, or at least I am, and so I want it to signify 5.5. Then click Launch MetaHuman Creator. Give it time to gather your stuff. And here we are. You should be able to click on a thumb image with the MetaHuman Creator icon on it. On the right, you should see the preview of the raw MetaHuman from Unreal Engine. If you already have a good feel for MetaHuman Creator, click on Edit and get started with MetaHuman Creator. Now, if not, not to worry. In the next video, I will be going over MetaHuman Creator and how we can use it for fast prototyping. See you then.